Welcome back today in the spotlight, the Kairitsu 1009 for your pleasure. By the Let's way, this is the first Kairitsu on the channel. Should be a good one. 1009 ships in your standard Kairitsu box. Pretty small box. Actually, the meter in general, smaller than I had originally envisioned. But hey, that's not always a bad thing. So all it comes with your standard little instruction manual. Kind of a pullout going on here. Um, yeah, it's okay. It's pretty brief. Nothing very uh, super illustrative there but that's okay and as well we got our Kairitsu test leads uh, we'll take a closer look at those in just a momento main crux the main thing we're all interested in is the meter and I gotta say first impressions for me are mixed it's kind of a, a you know it feels like quality but parts of it don't look quality so it, it's kind of a, a hodgepodge of good and bad and uh, we'll soon find out what that means Let's take a closer look at the selector switch, starting off at the off position. Volts AC up to 600 volts. Volts DC up to 600 volts. Resistance, continuity, and diode. Capacitance. Frequency up to 10 megahertz. Microamps, AC-DC. Milliamps, AC-DC. High current amps, AC-DC. Finally, a secondary off. We have some soft touch buttons starting at the far left is our select below that we have the reset in the middle we have a range on the far right we have our rel followed by the hold and the frequency duty cycle on the far right the bottom of the meter we have our jack inputs separate milliamp as well as a high current range 10 amps for the high current up to 500 milliamps for the low current in the middle we have our common or ground finally on the far right we have our voltage resistance and frequency input one thing I really like about the Kairitsu is that selector switch. Very easy to move. You have this nice, wide, long uh, dial. And I'm telling you, that is a really gorgeous selector. Love it. Very, very nice. And we don't have that annoying audible beep when we're turning. No, just the clackety clack that puts a smile on your face. Boot comes off really easily. Um, you know, I probably would have preferred to see it just a little bit more. Uh, um, I don't know strength with that boot so if you do drop it you sure as heck don't want the boot coming out but eh, anyway kind of a cheap molded plastic and you know if you look at the cutouts here not the greatest job really so mm, yeah mm. fit and finish wise this is where I'm definitely on the mixed uh, the standing bale the tilt stand Kind of cheesy cheap you know what i'm saying oh, look at that like ooh, pretty cheap thin plastic and overall just doesn't give a great feeling of quality and as well i don't know if you can see this or not but you know there's some interesting gouging going on here i, I don't know what that was all about but uh, this was brand new unopened so mm, i don't know okay well what does say cat 3 300 volt iec 61010-1 uh, okay made in china and we do have that awesome quality of assurance seal yeah now as i said the molded plastic it's you know uh, hit or miss once again um it just doesn't and I, whoa, look at this i mean that is one hell of a looking screw to use in a black encasement isn't it i don't know what they were thinking it just stands out like a sore thumb so oh, i don't know seems like they ran out of the right screw but anyway so yeah just generally speaking uh, i don't know you know, uh, test leads are definitely nice. Uh, Cat 4 600 with the shroud on and with it off, a Cat 2 1000 volt rating. Um, really nice and sharp tip. And, uh, you know, they're not silicone, but they have a very solid uh, feel to them. And one thing I really like as well is, is, you know, I do like smaller style test leads and these just fit into my hand beautifully. So, uh, yeah, I really like these test leads. Good job, Kairitsu. Oh, yeah, you know it's coming. You know it's coming. <laughs> oh, it's going. It's going. It's going. Ah, yeah. Okay, well, I inadvertently turned on the display, and, well, let's take a look at it. 
What do you think? It is small. It's a tiny font. Those digits are about 12.8 millimeters. Uh, yeah, really, really small. But that being said, it is quite clear. And uh, uh, I, I like it. I like it. And as well, look at that. When you change that viewing angle, you're not losing. You're not losing much. It's hanging in there. So uh, in terms of overall visibility, I think it's quite good. Now, unfortunately, all these buttons. And guess what? We don't have a backlight button. Oh, wow. No backlight. Yeah. All right, DC accuracy time it is. Starting off with 2.50 volts, giving us 2.505. Hey, not too shabby. Now the Kyber 1009 is 0.6% accuracy plus or minus four digits on the DC voltage side. So uh, food for thought. Next, we want to see 5.00 volts. And wow, pretty close. 5.01, 5.00. Hey. Come on. Okay, close enough. Only 7.50 volts. Coming up a 7.51, definitely within spec. 10 volts is what we want. 10.02 is what we get. So, oh, not totally on, but uh, hey, it is within spec. Unfortunately, Kairitsu does not have true RMS. No, uh, you're gonna be using the averaging method when you're measuring AC voltage. Coming up is 121.3 volts. There you go. Now the capacitance range kind of sucks, only goes up to 100 microfarad again. But once again, this is not a brand new meter per se. This has been around probably at least seven, eight years now. So uh, unfortunately they have not uh, done any revisions in the capacitance department, but uh, 100 microfarad, that's it, that's all. We're gonna look at the low side of things in terms of capacitance. Check out that nanofarad range and uh, just see how it stands. Okay, sitting at one microfarad right now, two microfarad. Try five microfarad. Nine microfarad. A little slow, but uh, off by just under one microfarad. Let's check out the nanofarad range now. 10 nanofarad. Let's do 20 nanofarad. 40 nanofarad. 50 nanofarad. Yeah, definitely slow, but. Uh, Finally, 90 nanofarad, coming up as 83.4. Hey, by the way, big thanks to all my subs out there. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. Appreciate it. Stay calm and carry on. I know it's crazy times we're living in, but hey, we got great multimeter videos. And you know what? Things are always going to get better. So, hey, right, thanks again one. for watching. Mega Ohm right now, coming up as 1.001. 2 Mega Ohm. 3 Mega Ohm. 5 Mega Ohm. A little slow. Seven mega ohm. Yeah, definitely not the fastest in terms of ranging. Nine mega ohm. Coming up as 8.9. Oh no, okay. Just taking a while to get there. Oh, it's a little slow in the resistance range. All right, 100 ohm precision resistor. And look at that. Oh, beauty. Very, very nice and accurate. Awesome. Let's see if we have any resistance on these test leads. Nothing, nothing. Beauty. Yeah, these are some really sweet leads. If we did, of course, we could use that rel feature, but in this case, not necessary. You see, we have that reset key. Uh, by pressing the reset key, all functions can be reset to their original position. So the range setting, mode setting, and data hold all are basically nulled, and every function goes back to its initial place. So right now I have a hold on there. If I hit that reset, you can see it just zeroes everything and it takes us back to square one. Yeah, interesting. Already about the Siglin power supply in parallel mode right now, sitting at 6.3 amps. And yeah, look at that, pretty darn close. Let's just bring it down a little bit. 4.7, 3.4, and coming up as 3.3 amps, down, down, down. 500 milliamps, 383 right, over to milliamps, sitting at 100 milliamps right now, actually 109 milliamps, coming up as 113. Let's take it up. 200 milliamps, up, 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 
325 milliamps, 323, coming up as 326. Now let's see what happens when we hit that threshold of 500 milliamps. And oh wow, okay, that looked uh, okay. So 400 milliamps is where it is maxing out, not 500. So uh, oh, already 400 milliamps is it? That's all in the milliamp range. There you go. Let's start off with a standard diode first. Let's see if we get a forward voltage drop. And 0.550 looks good. No worries there. All right, LED time. Mixed success. Let's see if Mr. Kai Ritsu can do any better. Here we go. Green LED. And oh, nothing. Nothing. Over to the yellow. Oh! Lights out in Georgia. Over to the red. Not a thing. Not even a forward voltage drop. The blue, well, that's obviously not going to work either. Oh, for five. Ah, disappointment, Mr. Kai Ritsu. You're no good at LEDs. Oh my, no wonder that was so dismal. Uh, a sour 1.6 volts output voltage in diode mode. Ugh. Already Aphrodite, here we go. Continuity, yes. Standard, default, stock, Kairitsu test probes. Three, two, one. Oh my. That is just scratchy and low. And really sad, that's really sad. Oh, whoa, the pain. Ah, let's see if the ProBasters can do any better. Wow, wow. I tell you, a picture's worth a thousand words, or is that a video? But I'm telling you, you'd think it was a different multimeter. Latched. Louder. And a lot quicker. Wow, what a difference these ProBasters make. Whew. Sixty-six point six decibels, output volume, in continuity. Hmm. Evil. The frequency right now. This has a ten megahertz maximum output. Let's see how high we can go. Sitting at one point four one eight. Pretty darn close. One point four one seven. Two point four megahertz. Three point four. Four point four. Five point four. Let's take it all the way up. Nine point four megahertz. 9.6, 9.7, 9.8, 10 megahertz, no problems, and we're still going, we're still climbing. Okay, let's see how high we can go. Oh yeah, 13.4 megahertz, still going strong. Wow, okay, okay. Let's take it up to 20 megahertz if possible. And, oh wow, 19, it just kind of fl flaked out, but we got as high as 18. Just bring it back. Yeah, so about 18.8, 19 megahertz is where it maxes out, so excellent job. About 10 megahertz almost over spec. Good stuff. Here we are on the inside of the Kairitsu 1009. On the far left, you can see no shielding. Yeah, no surprise. Well, kind of. It's not a cheapo, so I was expecting maybe something, but, well... No, we do have a little bit of foam though to keep that battery in place, but uh, yeah, whoop de doo shielding would have been nice to see as well. Starting off with those input jacks, wow, interesting. You know, I, I was gobblesmacked at first. Gobblesmacked? <laughs> I'm not a turkey, I was gobsmacked, is what I meant to say. Anyway, gobble gobble. Um, look at those input jacks, they are really in there, uh, supremely well done. Nice threaded insert, you have that steel standoff and those um, nice little uh, rings. But what I don't like, oh my gosh, what the hell is going on? Look at that, look at that right here. They somehow manipulated this this um, metal uh, insert and they, they sort of twisted it and, and oh God, it looks like something out of a bad car accident. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. What I do like though are those nice SEBA ceramic fuses. 500, 500 milliamp, what the heck? No, we only got 400 milliamps when we tested the darn thing. 400 is all we got, even though it has a 500 milliamp reading. Hang on, hang on. Yeah, 500 milliamps, that's what it says. Go figure. Ugh. As well, we have that high current F10A, 10 amp, 
600 volt SEBA fuse on the high current side. Uh, over here we have a couple of shut resistors. It is a 100 ohm and a 1 ohm. And it looks like at one point there was another one right there that probably could have been 0 0.01 ohm at one time. I don't know why they took it away. You know, uh, definitely that could have helped with the ver burden voltage at some point, but eh, anyway, we're missing a resistor. We're missing a resistor. Uh, one PTC, one lonely PTC, and that is on the uh, voltage side. Uh, we got a transistor clamp going on over here. Let's move down the board. In the middle, it gets kind of messy, kind of a combination of SMD and uh, uh, surface mount components. Look at all those electroly electrolytics over here. Oh, wow. Main IC, unfortunately, is cobbed. There's our speaker at Piso, uh, but not much else here going on. As well here at the top, this is the battery housing. Uh, a different way to put it, uh, that's for sure. Uh, two 1.5 AA batteries go right here. So that's sitting at the top of the meter. I don't see that all the time. Here we are on the other side. Here are the pads, the rotary selector pads. That's what makes contact with those selector tracks over here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five track pads all together. And if we take a look, look at that, very nicely done. We have a couple of brass threaded inserts here that's what keeps that uh, housing together uh, nice to see and yeah i love those input wells very nicely done take a look at the rotary selector tracks themselves nice big globs of solder here hold, holding in those inputs um, but generally not much else no grease on there whatsoever uh, pretty sparse pickings the side of the board here is our uh, zebra strip the elastomore that feeds the display and really that's about it okay gonna put it all back together and guess what folks as i was putting it back together oh yeah guess what broke off yeah that ridiculous car wreck style uh input just just was just so bad i don't know i don't know why oh nuts well what can i say i am shaking my head i was expecting so much more from kairitsu than what we got today oh gosh did not come away smiling that's for sure the cons really outweighed the pros talk about poor build quality oh utterly atrocious cheap plastics cheap housing and uh, don't get me started about that milliamp input fail oh come on guys okay well is it all bad? Is there anything good about this meter? Well, kind of. I mean, yeah, the selector switch was okay. Actually, no, it's not true. It was good. It was a good selector switch. Too bad it's on such a crappy meter, but it had a really nice tactile feel. And I mean, yeah, that frequency surprised me. It did really, really well. Um, but, you know, all things considered, huh, not one get me started about the low cap range. And man, this thing is overpriced. I got it for 67 bucks, but it's back up again to over a hundred bucks Canadian, about 80 something US. And man, oh man, talk about not being worth it. No, no, nothing really good to say other than stay away, stay very far away. You can do so much better for so much less money. And if you want to play in this money bracket, this thing cannot compete with what's out there. The Kairitsu 1009 gets a dismal 1.5 out of 5 stars. Thanks for watching this review, everybody. Hey, until the next one, keep on testing.